Welcome to Historic Hole. My name is David, and as always, I am joined by Jason and Michael. Howdy. Howdy, indeed. And we here at Historic Hole, we take a funny look at history, sometimes people, sometimes events, usually people recently, and a lot of part twos, for instance, today. Now, a lot of these people have led long, prosperous lives that we need to dive into. And uh, <sighs> today we're doing part two of Walt Disney. The Disney dive. Many episodes of abuse. <laughs> Anywho, we left Walt Disney. Uh, Hungry for children. Oh, wait. Sorry. That, that was Ub. Ub. <laughs> oh, yes. He, Ub left him. Yeah, Ub betrayed Disney. This yeah. is where we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, then uh, he got into a uh, labor union strike ordeal. Of course. Which he just got out of. What a shock. Uh, released Dumbo in October of 1941. The actual Dumbo. <laughs> released a flying elephant from its cage. <laughs> It was a nuisance in society. They had to put it down. And then America entered World War II. You've heard of it. We've touched on it before. So he got in uh, contact with Henry Morgenthau, the Secretary of the Treasury, and he started producing uh, war propaganda films starring Donald Duck. (laughs) (laughs) Kill some Nazis! (laughs) Yeah, if, if I know anything about the troops, this you know they get fired up by ducks. You got the you got the double D's. Uh, yeah, bring them in. Here comes Donald Duck. They're like, wait, there was, was going to be women. There was one short that won an Academy Award called Der Führer's Face. Oh yeah, which uh, Donald Duck was having a nightmare that he lived in a Nazi occupied America. Because it was going through Donald Duck's head. Yeah. <laughs> and he worked a conveyor belt, pressing shells. Before he was a kid's star. He was pressing shells in Nazi Germany. I'm surprised the photo of him in the Nazi regalia hasn't popped up on the internet, personally. Once I saw it, I was like, how has this not been memed? Disney's paid good money to expunge <laughs> that image from existence. Probably. I watched it on YouTube. You could take a still. Well, then why don't you? Well, there's they have the algorithms now. Yeah, that's true. You post it online, you're blacklisted <laughs> immediately. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you shouldn't be surprised. It's not like there's like pictures of Hitler flying around everywhere. I mean, they're there. But people typically don't make the Hitler memes like, oh, yeah. This is Donald Hitler. Yeah, exactly. But of course, you know, Hitler the mouse, duck. in the mouse's house, no one knows about their past. That's the back room. A the duck mouse. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also produced films uh, for the airmen, uh, aircraft production methods, and four methods of flush riveting, which apparently is help to help you be more uh, precise at flying. No, the air. Can you explain coming at you? So, okay, so I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yes. aerodynamics. Yeah, I was about that, to say. It was a big word. I yeah. couldn't get there. Air coming at you. Yeah. yeah, and then the ones going under you. I'm like, yeah, you mean basic flight things, you know, <laughs> that they teach you. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but he only broke even uh, with all of that stuff. At least he was making money. We're in World War II. Well, War uh, Dumbo, Dumbo didn't perform well. Of course it did. Yeah, it Princesses, a- bro. Yeah. And the... <laughs> Bambi also didn't perform of well. Princesses, bro. Yeah, no one's seen that movie. one. That one lost two hundred thousand. Uh, and the past failures of Fantasia and Pinocchio left. So basically, everything failed except for Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Thus far, and that's why they keep like rehashing that shit. Yeah, Disney is like rolling over his grave. He's like, we'll make money eventually on that. <laughs> Remake it. Uh, right now, he is currently. They're still trying to cover the losses from back then. Yeah, that's true. Two hundred thousand dollars was two hundred fifty thousand uh, million trillion. He's actually one point four million dollars deep right now with In the debt. with the Bank of America <laughs> by nineteen forty four. And they they want they'll get their money. <laughs> actually, <laughs> I've dealt with them before. Actually, uh, the bank's chairman and founder uh, Amadio Giannini uh, told the executives. I've been watching the Disney pictures quite closely because I knew we were lending money for above the financial risk. Lending the money for above the financial risk. That's a weird. He's Italian. You know, he speaks weird. Uh, 
They're good this year. <laughs> They're good next year. They're good the year after. You got to let these men have time to market their product. Well, yeah, obviously that is what you do sometimes. And I imagine, you know, he saw something in the moving princesses. I mean, he did, but he only had some clout. Obviously, yeah. they knew the proof and concept worked with yeah. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So it's like he kind of proved it there. But these, I mean, you're in World War fucking two, bro. There's other, exactly. there's bigger things yeah. going on right now. Not that I love Disney or making excuses for his shitty performance. I mean, who makes a movie about like a deer and his mom just gets shot in the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> the true enemy. Yes, man. Oh, that flop. You made a kid's movie where like at the very beginning you kill the mother. Oh, I'm surprised that flopped. Big fucking surprise. When everyone's fathers are being killed. It's like, well, we'll do something different. Kill the mother. <laughs> I know what's captivating to kids is parental murder. Because we all want to kill our parents. <laughs> Disney's typed into that. The angry adolescent. <laughs> well, uh, but feel by the mid to late 40s, he was getting more uh, competition with Warner Brothers and Metro Goldwyn Mayer, uh, MGM. Oh, oh. So thank you. He started. <laughs> backing away from the short animations and started doing like full feature animations. I'll some show more you my long animation dick. <laughs> live action stuff. But it was in uh, 1946, he was a founding member of the Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals, which was an organization to root out commies in Hollywood. Well, you know, because we won World War II at that point, so priorities shifted. <laughs> And actually, he was so fervent about uh, ousting commies that he went back to the 1941 labor strike and said, those were communists. Well, you know, as we've, <laughs> talk, we've talked about several witch hunts, I think, in historical. It's rather <laughs> convenient. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the damn commies fucking trying to collectively bargain for labor rights. That sounds like commie thinking to me. <laughs> uh, he Golly. testified before Congress. Of course uh, he did. During McCarthy's, all of McCarthy's little McCarthy stunts. Is a, his hearings. Yeah. The McCarthy hearings. This is the modern Salem witch trial. And, uh. So Edward R. Murrow pushed his shit in on live TV. <laughs> Literally. To jump forward <laughs> a little bit, in 1993, it was revealed that, uh, he was actually giving information to, uh, Hoover about potential communists in Hollywood. And Hoover allowed him to film uh, around FBI headquarters. Oh, just a little fun fact there. What were they filming? Yeah, exactly. Like, did he allow him to film just like the door? Is like, here's where all the secret shit is. <laughs> here, keep filming. Here. I mean, just on the grounds and shit. Like, just to have a place to film stuff in wooded areas. So they're just doing live action stuff at that point. Yeah, right. I mean, what, it would have been such a boring building, yeah. I imagine. Like, why do you even want to film there? It's like, hey, man, if you give me some shit on the commies, I'll let you film here in this really gray stone building <laughs> that has, like, nothing cool to look at. Well, he filmed shit there. Unless, unless, yeah, I don't know. Which films? I don't know. The <laughs> FBI, only the FBI knows that. Exactly. See, I mean, yeah, what, wait, what kind of films <laughs> were being filmed there? <laughs> We've got snuff. <laughs> it's like anti-communist propaganda. <laughs> yeah. In 1949, he moved out of Hollywood towards a uh, the Homey Hills. Homey? Homey Hills. Okay. What's up, Homey Hills? <laughs> We're all homies here. <laughs> Which was a district in uh, Los, Ange Los Angeles. The City of Angels. Great movie. And once he knew... <sighs> once he moved into his new digs... Uh, he had plenty of room to build a miniature train set, a live steam train. I see where this is going. Set because of his, you know, love for trains from an early age. He had been waiting for this moment. He's yeah. like tying up action figures. And exactly, running, running train. train. That's what he was all about. <laughs> he called. He called it the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad. That's bizarre. Named after the. Uh, Carrollwood Drive, which was his family home when he grew up. I wish the home I lived in was a train <laughs> track. <laughs> uh, but he had to uh, shut down his little train set after about three years because guests kept getting hurt. 
you know. Wait, wait. He'd have he'd have little parties, and then huh. everyone would be like, "Let's get on the train." Like it was actual. It was yeah. It was like train size, just going around the house. Probably dive as I mean, it was in his ba- steam. And- it was in his backyard, and it wasn't actual size, but it was you know those miniature trains you enough- see at amusement parks and shit. Give me like roller coasters. Yeah, it was like big enough for like. People to adults to jump on, like get on the train. Oh, so he would just tie real people to the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, choo choo. No, he's just playing with that scenario. Where's he's that hen pecking wench, wench that I live with? Wench. Oh, you mean uh, the one who wears the pants in the relationship? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The one with all the good ideas, Mrs. Disney. Yeah, who changed Mickey from what was it, Mortimer? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Mortimer. In the early 50s, he produced Cinderella, which... Uh, yeah, that's where they realized. The princesses. <laughs> oh, shit. Exactly, and people really like that one. Yay! <laughs> We're all a princess deep down inside. And that one cost $2.2 million to produce, and it raked in $8 million within the first year. Oh, oh. hell yeah. So he was like, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> we got our formula, boys. Yeah, it's like... Killing, killing the deer mom didn't work. The giant elephant that could fly didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Parental murder, orphans, those just don't grip people. But what if we could combine <laughs> the princesses with the orphan? Parent little bird. That's later. As we all know, because we've all seen all the movies. <laughs> but after Cinderella, he, him personally, he still had his staff working on animation shit, but uh, him personally started moving more towards the live action side of Disney uh, where he worked on Treasure Island and the story of Robin Hood and his merry men. (laughs) Uh, Not good movies. Then he came out with Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan. (laughs) Those did pretty well. Peter Pan's kind of a princess. I mean, were those, those were based on Michael Jackson. Wait, wait, (laughs) right. Yeah, there were stories. Yeah, yeah, they were based on stories. Lewis Carroll, uh, yeah. Did Alice in Wonderland, yeah, which apparently a lot of people hated the Disney adaptation. Oh, really? <laughs> One person wrote that it uh, was a degradation of Lewis Carroll's uh, novel, and that any fan of Lewis Carroll would go insane watching this shit. You know, something like that. Well, I mean, I think to be fair, like you know, Disney really kind of softened the image. Yes, we did, right? Like I, he, so like, you know, it, because that's what the whole novel's about. It's like really supposed to be out there and like use your fucking imagination to imagine yeah. this wild stuff. And that's why honestly doing adaptations of it really kind of, they, it ruins it. Like, because the whole point is for your, it to be in your head and use your imagination. Sometimes, but like, I feel like most Disney movies definitely do just like steal from random shit. I mean, like the Lion King is just Othello. With felines, <laughs> you know, basically large cats. Yeah, well, yeah, and they yeah. still soften it up. They always soften everything up. But see, I'm okay with that there because they're changing it. You know what I mean? This change. They're you actually using Alice in one. Like, there's no brand. Yeah, oh yeah, and then they just broke it down. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And it's like yeah, because yeah. you're actually putting a visual to it, I feel like you're kind of robbing people of their own imagination of what wonderland is that's the kind of the whole fucking point i feel like so yeah i kind of sort of agree with I that i mean the only thing i remember for the on an artistic that, level it's that goddamn cat if i'm being pretentious which you who are you, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone changed places so but as i was getting into backing away from the animation he's a. Uh, you know, just moved into his new digs in uh, near Los Angeles. Disney digs. He's hanging out with his family more. His children's names I can't remember because he kept them from public view. <laughs> he, can't. he kept them in the basement with Ub. <laughs> I know we're not really close anymore, Ub, but I'll leave the back door unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> I got plenty of children back there. The basement cellar is always open for you, Ub. <laughs> The children's torture chamber is I, always open for you, Ub. <laughs> Disney didn't put up his own kids. He just stole them from Disneyland. Which he he would take he would go off with his family and walk through uh, Griffith Park in Los Angeles and always dreamed of, you know, building a place inspired by some of his animations that people could come to and relax and have fun and, you know, just have a jolly time with your family. Which is funny because that vision definitely did not come true, because if you've ever seen a parent at fucking Disney World or land, whatever there. Yeah. 
They're not happy. First of all, they're not relaxed. They're the exact opposite of all those things you just described right there. Because, like, first of all, you can only do like four things a day in like 12 hours. It costs like what? $50,000 to get one ticket <laughs> to Disney World nowadays. You know? Yeah, they definitely price so out then, the, the riffraff. Yeah. So then when you're there, you're stressed. You're like, we need to have fun. <laughs> this cost, this fun costs money. <laughs> yeah, this, this is fun as a year's salary. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I, since you want to go to Disney World so much, kids, guess what? We're not even going home. We're staying at a hotel, and your mother's now a hooker. <laughs> you better enjoy the land of wonder. Your mother had to turn tricks to pay for this trip. <laughs> yeah, that's... Jesus the Christ. Magic Kingdom, indeed. <laughs> that's what working class people got to do to go. I'm just... Uh, March... You, you can only go to, afford to go to Disney World if you're a whore or a banker, <laughs> which are whores. <laughs> In March 1952, he received his zoning permit to build a theme park in Burbank near Disney Studios. But the lot proved to be too small, so they had to move it uh, 35 miles south near Anaheim. And uh, to make it seem like the studio wasn't losing money on shit, uh, Walt Disney actually set up an entire new, entirely new company to uh, do all of his uh, theme park work. And that became known as Walt Disney Imagineering. Oh, the Imagineering. Yes. <laughs> and just inventing words. Yeah, yeah, right. And everyone who worked there was an Imagineer. This is like a sandwich artist. <laughs> He's like Nazi Germany. <laughs> In 1954, he sent all of his Imagineers out and uh they started scouring out to where like they... where the imagineers are assassins <laughs> go run free imagine your victims dead <laughs> imagine your cows in a field <laughs> they started scouring the earth for theme parks to see what worked what didn't what people really oh. enjoyed you know got all that intel exactly. that's a good idea that uh, what's the competition doing yeah brought it back to disney it's and like, he started yeah, those russian roller coasters where they don't even make it off the top of the hill they just fly off don't do that <laughs> that wasn't a roller coaster that was actually a uh, they were executing all these uh, political <laughs> opponents <laughs> it's russia yeah commies. it's commies yeah yeah, yeah. imagineers <laughs> uh construction began july 16th 1954 Finished July 17th, 1955. Oh, I was like, huh, 54. <laughs> That's they some fucking efficiency right there. Well, he, yeah, he made sure that uh, shit got done. And that's probably what led to a lot of the problems on opening day, uh, which we will get into in a moment. He had sort of five uh, big uh, amusement areas in the park. Uh, Adventureland, Frontierland, Fantasyland, and Tomorrowland. And then had a railway, I guess it was four. And then had a railway that, you know, traveled through all of four. The monorail. Yes. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, so Tomorrowland was the thing. No, wait, what's that big circle thing? Epcot, we'll get there. That's oh, okay. Disney World, though. Oh, yeah, oh, sorry, we'll right. get That's there. Right. We're in Burbank. I forgot we're in Burbank. We're not in Florida. No, we're in Anaheim. <laughs> we're, in Anaheim. we're not in Burbank. <laughs> because we couldn't get the zoning permits. Michael's because it wasn't big enough. Attention. I am paying attention. I remember Burbank. I ain't paying attention. <laughs> I never paid attention. I'm an Imagineer. <laughs> I'm not paid to pay attention. <laughs> I'm not paid at all. I'm paid to kill. So July 17th was a Sunday, and they wanted to do like a soft opening for just Day. invited you know, guests. Except for there were fake tickets that... Uh, <laughs> Somehow people got a hold of the uh, the demand was huge. Yeah, yeah you couldn't scan shit back then. You could just be like, I'm just gonna like just draw this ticket. <laughs> uh, dude, people were always about Disney. Ugh, dude, people were always like fucking lunatics about it. Like it, it, it just he just inspired this devotion uh -huh. to make Jim Jones cum his pants. So pretty much uh, opening day, they had Jim Disney double the amount of people that they thought they were going to have. It's like, they're like, it's like watching a wall, like at a castle. It's like, how many tickets did we sell? It's <laughs> all so the cars start pulling up, you know, the 1950s cars. We're bringing the family. Here's our tickets. <laughs> like, how many? And also the ticket had a arrival time and a departure time. Like, okay, so you got here, whatever, 1030, leave by 230. People stayed. 
Oh, so then the oh, second, really? yeah, the second round of people showed up, and there were even more people because <laughs> no one wanted to leave Disneyland. <laughs> it was that awesome, right? Except for it really wasn't because apparently it got up to a hundred degrees that day. <laughs> so other things melting. <laughs> it was hot as fuck. The guy in the Mickey costumes is like, we need to unionize. (laughs) He's like giving him CPR. You know who did unionize during this? Plumbers. Oh, plumbers. So there was so much shit that day. (laughs) Unrelated, but (laughs) they actually. You see the pipes hit. (laughs) They gave him an ultimatum. You can have working toilets or working water fountains. (laughs) But not both. Why not both? And Disney said, well, they could drink Pepsi or Coke. So uh, let's make sure the toilets work. Yeah. Whoever gives us the most money at the time, Pepsi and or Coke, <laughs> we're enough. Whichever one I tasted for or last, that's who gets the money. So none of none of the attractions worked. Most of them broke down. <laughs> so the plumbers are like, we'll get something working here. All the engineers are built all this shit, you know. <laughs> Where because, are they to be found? <laughs> because they were under such hard. Uh... They were in Walt Disney's basement. <laughs> They were under a lot of stress to get it done. Pressure. I yeah, bet the pressure. Word. That's the word. And so that's why it got done in a year and a day. But nothing fucking worked. So did it really get done? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loose definition of done here. So I was saying, like, we have to let it work one time while Walt comes through. <laughs> and that was a dog that. and pony show. Yeah. Just to <laughs> please the inspectors. <laughs> yeah, wow. Like, this is Tomorrowland. <laughs> just get his name. Walt, well, you really got an operation here. The 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea submarine voyage. That was a no-go. The Dumbo flight. He drowned a whole group of passengers. The Nautilus sunk. (laughs) Peter Pan's flight and Dumbo the flying elephant also didn't work. The elephants didn't fly. (laughs) Like, originally dissipated. What uh, what were the rides like? I actually rode the 20,000. Thousand league the under 20 the sea thesis. One. Yeah. Oh, you can't say shit about yeah. mispronouncing anything today. <laughs> but like the the twenty k under the league. <laughs> so, yeah. so that ride. So literally, it's supposed to be the giant like squid attack. You just sit in the thing that looks like the Nautilus from like the fifties movie, like the green submarine. And you just sit there and you just have like this fake animatronic squid go, and then they spray a bunch of water on you. But I bet you the one they made back then was like. Well, this was actually a submarine, and uh, it's going to sink and kill everybody. <laughs> like, maybe we shouldn't do Well, that. did they have animatronics? Was it, Oh, yeah. Okay, so it was, we we're at that level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. To this big, day, big they're stuff. still there. Yeah. Big, big shit. It's Disney. <laughs> Go I'm big. sure they've updated since. Go big oh, or get right. your family killed. <laughs> and also, a lot of the construction wasn't finished. And so the, what really was finished? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Was, wait, what? It might be my hand. The gates. The gates opened, so. <laughs> the doors worked. There was solid earth to stand on. <laughs> People were still painting structure or painting houses, and uh, lawn care was still happening, to the point where actually Walt Disney well, you put, mow the lawn sometime. put a bunch of uh, scientific the Latin names for weeds in front of the weeds to make it look like it was supposed to be there. It's exotic. <laughs> It's like, when in doubt, you know, you just brush it under the couch. You know? <laughs> it was like, put something scientific in front of the weed. Just like spending more money to create the signs than it yeah. is to just pull the fucking weed so out. Things, it's like, you know, it's like you're being, you're doing more work to be like lazy. Do less. <laughs> yeah. You're even doing more instead of doing less. If you just like took the weeds out, then they're gone. But even with all those uh, minor catastrophes, uh, <laughs> it still proved profitable. Of course. Fake tickets. Again, he's loyal followers of his. And after about a month, he started receiving 20,000 visitors a day. And then in the first year, it was 3.6 million people had gone to Disneyland. Now, as I said, he wanted to distance, distance himself from his film studio uh, during all the theme park stuff. And one of the uh, monetary backers he got was the American Broadcasting System. <laughs> And their little deal on ABC. (laughs) ABC? Yes. Okay. So I just said that. And uh, I said system instead of channel. Channel, yes. Whatever. That's why I was like ABS. (laughs) (laughs) I like how we both knew what he was saying. (laughs) I just, I don't hear anything. I don't pay attention. System. 
Anywho, a part of their deal was that Disney would start uh, producing little features for their broadcasting channel. Little children for their CEOs to eat. And thus we get Walt Disney's Disneyland, which is basically just a bunch of old cartoons, uh, some live action stuff. But it was a big hit with viewers. And uh, So the movie was called Disneyland? Yeah, the show. The show. show was called so, Disneyland. Ah, okay. The current show. Okay. Yeah. It's like a wait, weekly, wait. weekly thing. It's like serialized, like Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> and Roy Disney. Walt. He was truly ahead of his time. <laughs> I wonder what Walter was based off of. Roy Disney, <laughs> Walt's brother. Walter w- Disney. <laughs> was pretty much uh, we need to cook. <laughs> CEO at the time. We need to cook mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Roy Disney was pretty much CEO at the time. And he saw the numbers as like. All right, let's keep doing this. I am the one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just keep uh, making money hand over fist. Yeah, yeah we'll Why keep not? doing this. Guys just like counting like oh, more. <laughs> and uh, that's good. what brought about the Mickey Mouse Club uh, little mouse kid show. Yeah. I like all these kate- the, the tier, the Imagineers, Mouseketeers. You can't just be a Exactly. An it's ear. a fucking religion, dude. Yeah, I don't like that. They are building an organized religion. Possibly the biggest one in the world. Oh my god, we're all subscribed. <laughs> Only rivaled by Warner Brothers and Harry Potter. <laughs> dun, dun. It's like this is like it's like Disney and Harry Potter. It's like Islam and Christianity. Uh, Basically. Hot take. Anywho, they Harry also Potter. started <laughs> I don't know about that. They started producing uh, a five- Disney already owns them. <laughs> yeah, watch. I don't think Disney owns No, Potter. I said they were listening to us and they bought them <laughs> before this airs. <laughs> Yoink. Yeah. I thought you were talking about Islam. Disney bought Islam. <laughs> <laughs> Dislam. They, they have a lot of money. You know. <laughs> Allah <ek mizbe>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, look, boy. <laughs> Kill you, but <laughs> <laughs> You would be rewarded in heaven. Uh, <laughs> Have an engineer. <laughs> Don't listen to the Western Satanists. <laughs> <laughs> and so they uh, started working on a little mini series for the Disneyland show. Was the uh, Davy Crockett? Uh, Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett. Which that song became Man so- of the front frontier. Yeah, <laughs> the old frontier. Uh, I think it's Wild I Frontier. I thought it was Wild Frontier, yo. Yeah. Whatever. King, he's a king wild. of the Wild Frontier. Said, yeah. It's an old it's an old frontier right The now. old Wild Frontier. Like Billy Bob. I'm the king of the Wild Frontier. <laughs> well, that song proved to be so popular that he... Uh, <laughs> so how much life sucked back then. Davy Crockett was like, turn on that Davy Crockett song again, boy. Yeah, the ballad... Beat your mother. Ballad of Davy Crockett. Uh, <laughs> 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 he formed the Disneyland Records... And started producing oh, uh, records. <laughs> <laughs> Hit singles. <laughs> Here's oh. the new single from Disney. <laughs> I'm DJ Mickey. <laughs> and then we have a bunch of, uh, you know, big hits. Lady and so the Tramp. Out. <laughs> oh, Lady and the Tramp. Lady and the Tramp comes out. Sleeping Beauty. Offensive. They should cancel that movie. Sleeping Beauty, 101 Dalmatians. The Sword and the Stone. Yeah, these are all. The, this is yeah. This is the, the later era. Of yeah, Disney. Well, this really like, became yeah. a lot fi- more. Yeah, the fifties. A lot more competent. Yeah, the f- I feel like in except for the sword and the stone. I don't know about that one. <laughs> no, sorry, sixties, late fifties, yeah, early. I was 60s. gonna say yeah. This is like a little later than that. Sword of the Stone was sixty three. Yeah, yeah. Cruella. You could tell there was definitely from like if you like that was sixty one. If you go back though, the new like, Cruella movie. Shut up. No, uh, the one hundred one Dalmatians. Was I know 61. that. Yeah, isn't the sixties? Did you? Anywho, so in 1964, Mary Poppins comes out. And everyone enjoys it, except for the author of Mary Poppins. <laughs> because well, Disney had fought for years to get the rights, and then he got it, and the author was like, fuck, shouldn't have sold it. I mean, he wanted some money, and to be fair, I bet your author's back then. Yeah, there wasn't P. any P. movies. P.L. Travers. P.L. Travers was yeah. the but no one remembers his book. They remember, you know, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine <laughs> go down. I was like, fuck your book. You know, whoever was in that that top apartment that the chimney sweeps were fucking dancing on was probably pissed. <laughs> chim, 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 <laughs> like, Stop it! Keep it down! <laughs> they, 
Stop stomping on my no. ceiling. I know. I stopped. Oh, I know you heard me. I was about to be like, wrong movie, same actress. <laughs> That's a movie about them escaping the Nazis. Eh, it might as well be the same thing. Mary Poppins oh, is actually a of music. Is that what you went with? Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. That's where he went. In 1964... The mouse is alive with the sound of money. <laughs> <laughs> in 19... <laughs> with children they've eaten for a thousand years. <laughs> in 1964... At the New York World's Fair, Disney provided four exhibits. Uh, it's a Small World. Oh, that shit's terrifying. Which is a little boat ride with auto animatronic dolls depicting children of the world. Uh, <laughs> I've seen Chucky. <laughs> I know that ended and up. And believe me, Disney's very familiar with the children <laughs> of the world. <laughs> Those were children. Uh, great Real moments. Time. Great moments with Mr. Lincoln. which well, was had an exotic appetite. <laughs> Continue. Great Lincoln. moments with uh, Mr. Lincoln, which was just an animatronic of Abraham Lincoln giving his speeches. Hmm. Uh, the car. Car. <laughs> Probably right. <laughs> uh, the Carousel of Progress, <laughs> which promoted the importance of electricity. Oh, so not social progress. <laughs> Disney wasn't for that. <laughs> and Ford's it. Magic Skyway, which portrayed the progress of mankind. And all those did pretty well. And at the end of the fair, uh, Disney packed them all up and took them to Disney World with them. And Put it just, in the back of his car. <laughs> Dis- Disney World or Disneyland? Disneyland, sorry. And uh, just had them year-round there. Yeah. Everything is going great for him. M- movies are finally making money. Doing the th- gangbusters. The theme park is making money. So he starts thinking about another theme park. In Florida, specifically near a Lor- Orlando, 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 oh, specifically near Orlando Jones house of <laughs> make seven up yours fame. And in 1965, he announced plans to create Disney World. And I was like, oh, oh, my God. Disney World. And he wanted to, it to have a, a who map. needs a land. What do you have a world? <laughs> He wanted it to have an, a, a Magic Kingdom, which is basically just a bigger version of Disneyland. Bigger version of his torture chamber. And then also Epcot, which stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. Your DNA has changed every time you enter this Epcot building. Where he imagined it as a little actual community where people lived. Oh, now who's the communist? And uh, the technology... Like a communist, Walt. <laughs> the technology of the time would always change with the time for that community like they would always give you the amenities you mean just like normal life it's like if you live in epcot like everything will advance you get internet (laughs) it's like well all the rest of us can't do but epcot (laughs) unfortunately though uh walt disney was a heavy smoker loved his cigarettes just like all of us here piper too (laughs) and uh he would he would actually like have a pipe at every single <laughs> finger he could. He would double fist the cigarettes sometimes. No filters too. He'd roll his own tobacco. <laughs> he that was a real Disney man. tobacco. That's what Disneyland was actually for. <laughs> to grow all the tobacco. And That's why it didn't work out in Burbank. He's like, oh, it's too small. <laughs> Plant all the tobacco. <laughs> he really got into the animation game to pay for his tobacco <laughs> habit. You know. In November of nineteen ni- or ni- nineteen sixty six, he was diagnosed with lung cancer. Yikes. <laughs> which he decided to uh, treat with cobalt therapy, which is basically gamma rays being shot at the tumor. So basically, he wanted to become the Hulk. <sighs> Long story short, <laughs> who he eventually owned. <laughs> <laughs> Disney won in the end. <laughs> He's like, I'll become the Hulk one day. Uh, November 30th, he felt unwell. <laughs> He's got lung cancer. <laughs> He's getting gamma rays shot into his body. I mean, Just one day, I'm like, I finally feel unwell. <laughs> uh, he was taken to St. Joseph Hospital where he stayed until December 15th, uh, 10 days after his 65th birthday uh, when he passed a ray. A, ray. a pa- gamma ray. He passed a gamma ray through his asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he passed away he died. <laughs> of circulatory collapse caused by the cancer. And that's how 
Walt so he, Disney died. So guess what? And then that's he was why, cremated. That's why the retirement age is 65, because <laughs> he reached that age and just died of lung cancer. He was cremated. Yeah. He wasn't frozen. No. And stored under Disney World, like <laughs> the conspiracy theorists. Oh, hold on a second. If we hear historical or anything, he probably is frozen. No, nah, he's alive. He's kicking it with Tupac. Anywho, uh, he's right here. <laughs> Special guest, first guest star, Walt Disney. <laughs> he holds uh, the record for most Academy Award nomina- nominations. Nominations. Mama motions. <laughs> nominations. Mama mia nations. Uh, with fifty nine, and <sighs> the most so much cooler. The most actor wins with twenty two. Wait, what? Well, he wasn't acting, but uh, he took credit studio. for all of it, so he received it. I guess from movies that he produced, he had actors. I don't approve. That's what they mean. He actually said, if anyone's going home with an Oscar, it's me. <laughs> That's like totally, yeah. <laughs> he was a humble man. man. Yeah, clearly. He's like, I want to own the world. <laughs> he's telling you everyone behind the scenes, clearly. Yeah. Uh, also, world. there is a lot of hearsay about him being an anti Semite and anti racist person in general, uh, which. Wait. Anti-Semite and anti-racist. Or just racist person. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm like, is he <laughs> just straight Anti-Semite up and racist. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> that's what I was about to Dude, say. Walt and Louis Farrakhan were kicking it back <laughs> in the day. I was like, yeah. Like, uh, God damn. I believe a Jews. lot. <laughs> a lot I love of it, you, bro. I believe a lot of it was just propaganda by Warner Brothers and MGM to uh, assassinate put, his character. Yeah, put, put shade on the Disney name. Uh, because anyone who ever met him was just like, yeah, no, he's a really nice guy. Well, so... Yeah. Except for all those uh, yeah. workers that he... <laughs> I don't know. He kept from unionizing. Well, yeah, yeah, don't work for him, but if you just, like, just socialize... Him passing, yeah, yeah, socialize with him. He's a pretty nice guy. Yeah, yeah. And he's Walt Disney. I'm like, he's probably a creep. Like, he's like, loves princesses and shit. He loves children. Yeah. Actually, uh, Floyd Norman, the studio's first black animator, who worked with him during the 50s and 60s, said... Not once did I observe a hint of the racist behavior Walt Disney was often accused of after his death. His treatment of people, and by this I mean all people, can only be called exemplary. Well, to be fair, he probably was a really good animator, and that's the only reason they let him in at the time. But then there's also a quote. (laughs) That's why they needed him. (laughs) Who uh, a lot of people, you know, did acknowledge that he played a sort of bashful tycoon you know, he, we're around people easily, you know, a little of bumbly. He's bashful. I'm the bashful mogul. <laughs> but then. Uh, <laughs> oh, look at me. I'm the bashful billionaire tyrant. You imagine, like, yeah, Richard Brands. Like, I'm just like, oh, I'm just, oh, I'm just me. But then. Virgin. In oh space. In confidence with a friend. I guess, and the friend divulged after he died. Disney said, I'm not Walt Disney. I do a lot of things Walt Disney would not do. Walt Disney does not smoke. I smoke. Walt Disney does not drink. I drink. So exactly. He's like LeBron James. Who He's was? He's like full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who was? Sorry, I love you, about his image. Yeah. And he sold it well. Yeah. So you know what he was doing? I mean, because, yeah, there was no... It was harder... He, yeah. He had Walt his pecking wife. Yeah. If Walt Disney lived in this day and age, there would be all those pictures like Ben Affleck outside, like... Uh, like with a back tattoo of a dragon. <laughs> Shit like that. It's like, here's the real Walt Disney. <laughs> Get a Miami club. Ba- back I only opened this in Orlando him. because guess what? There's so much cocaine coming no, from Cuba. No, it's back tattoo of Mickey Mouse dressed as the Grim Reaper. Could be. No. Sounds badass. All right. It's Mickey Mouse just eating children. <laughs> All or right. maybe it's just the name of every child he's eaten. <laughs> kind of like the one. No, day. no, not the names, just like. Yeah, Dad lines. lines. Exactly. <laughs> He's like, the names wouldn't fit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's get to the chill stuff. And by the way, Disney owns everything you watch, so you're welcome. Give us five stars on iTunes if we're worth it. And if we're not worth it, then just... Call del- Walt Disney. Then delude yourself into believing that we're good, like you, you do with Disney movies. <laughs> and give us five stars. Good kill, reviews. Kill our, kill our parents, because like a Disney movie. Yeah. Give us five dead parents. <laughs> Give us five orphans. <laughs> to put in a Disney's basement. Base of dement. Base of dement. Oh no. my god. A debasement. If you're listening but you like watching, we do this on YouTube as well, so you can go watch us on YouTube and see us and then bully us to suicide. 
Uh, follow us on the social media platforms, Instagram and Twitter. Those are things. We post a full episode on IGTV. Uh, that's a uh, video as well. Word, word of mouth is the best advertising that we can get. So if you like it, please tell people about it. That would be awesome. We really would appreciate that. Use your that's mouth like holes. the only genuine thing I ever say on this fucking show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, Never shut the fuck up about us, please. Uh, you can email us at historical at gmail.com if with any questions, but honestly, I don't even check it, so you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> um, so and do yeah. honest things. <clears throat> so for this week, uh, the statement of this week, the statement of the week. The week. The week this week is, uh, that's the last time I invite anybody to a fucking comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Life is full of holes. Enter wisely. Bye. She talked a lot for a five.